Okay, so I'm going to go over just a little bit of the IA for the data table and the graph. Uh, so you can see right here, we have some sample data. Um, don't need to talk about where it's from, but it's it sample data. So here's the data table right here. Uh, I'm going to fix it up a little bit. Just a few things. We have the title up here. Then you have the, the, uh, the variable slash unit. Then you can see for the uncertainty, you have the delta, the variable, equals plus or minus. What the uncertainty here, this is analog, so from a clock, so at about 0.2 seconds. Uh, this one here was a digital readout, so it was just the, the, the smallest decimal place. And over here, this uncertainty was the largest range divided by two amongst all the trials down here. All right, so a couple of things here to fix this up. First of all, you have to make sure that all the data underneath uh, the uncertainty has the same amount of decimal places. Like you can see this one here, the 20, it does not. So what I'm gonna do is highlight these and you go up here to increase or decrease and you wanna match with this till it has the same amount. You can see it went too much there. So I'm gonna go down one. So now 0 .0, 0 0.0, 0.2 is all the same decimal places. Here, there's three dozen places, but you can see down here, for whatever reason, there's way too much. So I'm gonna highlight all of these, and I'm gonna have it so they're all, oh, that was too much. Okay, so now that one has three dozen places, as that one does. This one also has three dozen places, probably because I used Excel to ca uh, calculate it. So I'm gonna bring it down to three dozen places, so it matches. The other thing here I'm gonna fix is, you can see here these, I know a lot of people have questions, how do you merge these cells. So I'm going to highlight these three. I'm going to go ahead and right click and go down to format cells. Then go to alignment, merge cells, and OK. And you have to do it all three times separately. Format cells, merge cells, OK. And do it one more time. Format cells, merge cells, and OK. And now, once that's all done, I'm gonna highlight all of this, go to the center tab right here. When you center, just like you when you're typing something out, like for a title page, center content, boom, they're all centered. And I'm also gonna put borders around each of them. So when you copy it into your Word document, I'll have borders in, that is good. Well, I can resize this a little bit. If you put the cursor between the letters uh, for the columns, just double click, automatically resizes. And uh, there you go. So, and remember, when you copy this into your document, whether it's a Word doc or a Google doc, you want to copy it as a picture or image, rather. So to do that, highlight all of it, then hit Control C or right click and copy. Yeah, I'll, I'll right click, it's fine. Copy, I'm gonna open a Word doc. As it opens, blank document. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put it here. I'm gonna right click in the paste options. You wanna make sure you click on the one that says picture. This way your formatting doesn't get messed up even if you transfer to a PDF file or whatever. Um, and now you can resize it and all the formatting stays exactly as you want. Okay, so now the graph. Let's go back to here. I'm gonna graph it. So I'm gonna highlight these things here. And I'm gonna hold, I know you can't see, but I'm gonna hold the control key down and I'm gonna, this is my independent variables, and I'm gonna highlight these over here, and then pick up all the, button, all the buttons. So now I have this column, and then this column. And I did that by, again, uh, by first selecting this, highlighting that, hold, let go of the mouse, hold the control key down, move the cursor over to the other column, while I'm still holding the control key, highlight this, then let go of everything. So go to insert, it might be a little bit different if you have an older version of Excel. Uh, then I'm going to choose XY Scatter, and this is exactly the one I want. My data happens to be exactly linear. Um, and so I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to have a 100% graph for IB. First of all, I'm going to change the title. Just click in the title. I'm going to double click to change it. Uh, and you always do the dependent first. So in this case, it was volume. I'm just going to type volume versus time. You could put a little more in there if you want. I'm going to add, um, let's see, format. Go to, oh, maybe it's design. Design, add chart element. I need some axis titles. Put them in horizontal. Let's see, this was 
basically independence of the time, edu time, slash, and you gotta write the variable too. In this case was seconds. And then for vertical, double click in there, and it's volume, in my case, slash milliliter. All right, so now error bars. Now my error bars should be this, the uncertainty, 0 0.027 in my case. So what I'm gonna do is, it might be a little bit different on, again, your computer if you have an older version of Excel. For mine, I gotta click right here and add chart element. For you, it might be somewhere up here. If you click on format or design or layout, uh, and just look around for error bars. But for me, it's this one right here. Error bars, go to more error bars options. And then you wanna look towards the bottom, you click on custom. And I'm gonna specify the value. I want my value yeah, specify value. Oh, there it is. Specify value. And this dialog box, in this case, is going to be 0 0.027 for me. So it should be this value right here that you calculated so for positive and negative. 0 0.027. Hit OK. Now close that window out. You click on the horizontal error bars. Just click on it so you can see it's highlighted me. And I'm going to just hit the delete key on the keyboard. Delete. So there you go. So now I need to make trend lines. You need three. You need the maximum, the minimum, and the regular trend line. And you need equations for all three. Um, so the maximum goes in the bottom of this first error bar, the top of the last error bar. So I'm going to make a little data table over here. I'm going to call it max gradient. Um, and I'm going to type in the x value for this coordinate right here, which will be the same x value as your as this coordinate right here. This is my case zero. So let's type in zero. Uh, don't worry about making making sure that the decimal places match because no one's going to see this. You're only going to copy over the data table and the graph to your document. There, no one's going to see this. This is just for you. Uh, and then the last x coordinate is for the last one. In this case, it's 20. So it should match that one right there. All right, so the y coordinate. So the y coordinate of this first one right here, it should be this y coordinate where that one was, in this case, 0 0.009, minus this uncertainty. And uncertainty is 0 0.027. Now you can go ahead and use that in a calculator, but I'm gonna use Excel for it. I'll show you how to do that. Whenever you do a formula in Excel, you always hit equals first. Then for me, I'm just gonna type in 0 0.009 minus the uncertainty 0 0.027. There it is, and yes, it's gonna be negative. You can see it goes negative right here. And this Y coordinate is whatever that one was, the last one, plus the uncertainty. The uncertainty is always the error bar. So equals, in this case, the last coordinate is 0 0.225, 0 0.225, plus my uncertainty, 0 0.027. And now, that's where the max coordinate, max, maximum gradient, sorry, and then the minimum gradient. Again, the same x values. Now the y value, it starts in the top of this error bar and goes to the bottom of the last error bar. So that y value would be this one right here. So start with the equal sign, 0 0.009, plus the uncertainty, 0 0.027. And then it's gonna go right here. So it's gonna be this value right here, 0.225, and then minus the uncertainty, zero, minus, 0 0.027. Now, you don't know if you did it right until you tell Excel to plot these coordinates. Now, to do that, you put your cursor somewhere in one of the blank spots of your graph. Doesn't matter where exactly, somewhere. Right click, then go to select data, and this dialog box will come up. Then click on add. Now, for the series name, click, in this case, max gradient right there. Click that. For the Y values, click on that field. Make sure it's, that cursor is blinking in there. And go ahead and highlight these two values over here. These are your two X coordinates. Highlight both of them like that. Okay? Um, you should see these dashed lines going around the values that you highlighted like that. For the Y values, this is key. Make sure you delete that bracket one. Sometimes if you don't manually delete it, it shows back up again. So I just hit backspace or delete to delete that value. Make sure that cursor is blinking in there and highlight these two Y coordinates like that. So you can see these dashed lines going around it like that. Click OK, and you can already see in the, be in the graph right here, it did it right. So I'm just going to go ahead and add the minimum gradient coordinates. Add. Series name, minimum gradient. 
x values, these two right here, just like before, y values, you can hear me click on the backspace to manually delete that, click on these, hit OK, and then OK. There you go. Now again, if you have an older Excel, you might be, you might be seeing squares and triangles here or whatever, uh, but these should be highlighted. Now, luckily for my data, my error bar is big enough, I can see all three of these. I'm going to go ahead and right click on each of these one at a time, click on add trend line, and then I'm going to make sure I go down and it says D display equation on chart. Close out that dialog box. So this one right here, if I'm not sure, if I hover my cursor over top of it, you can see it says max gradient in there. I'm going to click in front of that and type in the words max, I'll just type max grad, colon, that's good enough. Oops, I didn't hit enter. And click off of that. You can see it pushes it over right away, but if you just click on it again and then move it over, grab and move it. So I'm going to do it for the other two. That's the main plot right there. Add trend line. Go down here to display equation on chart. Close out the dialog box. Move that one over. That's your main line. I'm not going to title that. Um, then this last one here. I right click again. Go to add trend line. Go to the bottom. Display equation on chart. Close out dialog box. I'm going to move this equation over. I am going to click in front of that. That's my minimum gradient. Min grad. And this one. Enter again. And um, so the one more thing I want to add to this is more grid lines. To do that, again, if you have an older version, it might be up here to add more more grid lines. Uh, but I am going to see, click in here. Uh, go to format, design, sorry, design. Go to grid lines. I'm going to make sure the minors are in there for both vertical and horizontal. And that is exactly the way it should appear. So if I click on it and then Control C to copy it or to make sure, so you can see I'll right click, go to copy, go to my document, and then I'm gonna find a spot where I wanna put, I'll even type a title for you, graph. And then I'm gonna right click and your choice, your paste op option, make sure you click on picture. Otherwise, the formatting will get messed up. And I can resize it however I wish. And there's your graph. Now remember, after you do your graph, you're going to have to calculate the slope uncertainty. That's where all that work to get these two equations was all about. Um, to get the slope uncertainty, here, I'll just show you really quick. Last thing, slope uncertainty calculation you want to take uh, the max gradient minus the min gradient parentheses around that uh, divided by 2 so okay went to the next page but you can see so in my case it would be 0 0.0135 so equals uh, 0 0.0135 minus, and the minimum gradient you can see is 0 0.0081, close it up, divided by 2, and, well, I'm not going to my calculator right now, you guys can do the rest, you do the calculator, and that's how you do it, and every time you refer to your slope in your conclusion, make sure you put plus minus whatever that uncertainty is. Alright, that's how you do it. Good luck.